G'day, Spence here from WA Fishing. Today I'm just going to take you through how I prepare and cook abalone. It's often the question I get asked online because if you do it wrong it can be quite tough and actually not very nice to eat. But I can guarantee you the way that I cook it, you'll be 100% sure to do it again. Alright, well let's get into it. Alright, so here's the abalone. Got them fresh this morning. Uh, still alive as you can see. You don't want to leave them until they're dead. The best way to keep them alive is in fresh water. I'll last them there as long as it's cool and out of the sun uh, for quite a few hours. What you'll also need is a lot of salt. Uh, just standard salt, doesn't matter. Um, some sort of implement brush which we'll clean the abalone with. Uh, you can just use a nail brush or sometimes I actually like to use something with a bit harder bristle. We'll need a knife, spoon and gloves which I'll explain a bit later on how we use that. And last but not least the most important thing, a pressure cooker. Absolutely need a pressure cooker. Now these abalone actually quite large. Um, some of them uh, pretty typical size but then there's some real monsters so just to demonstrate so how big some of these are today that we got so there's your uh, size limit gauge uh, next to one of these abalone um, as you can see they're almost twice the size of the gauge which is pretty impressive now these are rose abalone for those who don't know they're not to be mistaken with the green lip or the brown lip which you get down south much smaller version um, and they tend to be in shallower water as well, which makes it easy. Now, I know what you're thinking, there's going to be a lot of effort, pressure cooker, gloves, you know, knife, what does it really mean, scrubbing brush? Um, you know, I've been shown, oh, just tenderize them or slice them really thinly. Trust me, you won't ever look back again when you've done this method that I'm about to show you. All right, so how do we clean these buggers? Well, as you can see, they're all dirty and covered in sand and all sorts of stuff. First step, really just fill up a bucket of water. Um, and then we're gonna add a whole heap of salt to it. So, we've got your salt, and we'll do that very shortly. So, chuck all your abalone, you don't need to clean them at this stage. Chuck them all in a bucket. Try and keep the water level um, as low as you can possibly get it to submerge them. All right, next we're gonna add a shitload of salt. Now you're gonna see all these abalone squirm. Now the idea here really is to get the acidity up um, in the water. You can add a bit of uh, vinegar or lemon juice as well. Um, but I recommend just using salt um, because you can get some impart some flavour that you don't want. Now, sort of mix that up, let dissolve all the salt into the solution. Now these abalone are actually going to die, but we're gonna leave this for a couple of hours. I recommend at least an hour to two hours. And what's gonna happen is that salt's actually gonna make the abalone a lot easier to clean down the track. So I'm going to leave these in this bucket for a couple of hours and we'll come back and I'll demonstrate what the next steps are from here. Alright, so while we're waiting for that uh, abalone to soak in that salt solution for the next hour or two, another question I get asked is where is a good place to find abalone? Well for me, I guess I live south of the river around the Rockingham area. Uh, what I will say is that anywhere that's land accessible tends to be overfished and the abalone are a lot smaller and in smaller quantities. Um, if you actually can get access to a boat or get anything that can get you out to one of the islands, particularly you know around Safety Bay, you've got Penguin Island, you've got um, Seal Island, and if you're further north around the Coburn Sound, you have Garden Island and you have Karnak Island and any of those rocky outcrops, there tends to be a lot more abalone and a lot bigger. 
even to a point where there's like thousands and you can see them all over the reef system and you can basically just pluck your, your 15 pretty quickly. Um, that's probably the best advice I can offer. I'm not going to give specific locations, but you'll see where all the boats hang out and it's pretty obvious where, uh, you know, for that 7 to 8 a.m. period where all the, if there's a big group of people, there's obviously abalone there. Um, so it's not exactly like it's a secret, so to speak. Um, so yeah, that'd be my advice if you wanted to catch, uh, you know, a lot more abalone and a lot larger ones. So that would, hope that helps. Well, while I'm waiting, I'm going to go clean all my diving gear, um, all my wetsuit and whatnot, and we'll come back and hopefully we we'll can just go through the steps of uh, cleaning and cooking these abalone. Fuck, I hate this part. Cleaning down. Hot tip, invest in an abalone knife. You won't ever look back. Okay, we've left these sitting for about an hour, an hour and a half. Uh, normally I let them lock, go for like two to three hours because the more longer you leave them, the more the easier they are to clean. But I've got stuff I need to do today. As you can see, hopefully, but uh, the water's actually gone quite dirty. And that's because of some of the discoloration on the side of the lips and that is starting to come, come away. So I recommend you go outside for this, but uh, we're going to take the brush, the knife, the spoon and the pair of gloves and we're going to go outside and uh, start cleaning these abalone. So we've got quite a lot going on outside, but um, what you'll firstly need is some water. Fill that one bucket with water and I just use that to rinse. I've got a dirty bucket here that I just cut chuck all the leftover scraps in and I feed into my chooks which are located over there. Uh, here's the abalone that we've been soaking in salt solution for now a couple of hours and then this is my pressure cooker um, insert so that's where we'll put the finished product. All right gloves um, to explain why I use gloves is because this is actually can get rather messy. Um, all right, first step, brush and abalone. So you can see they're covered in sand and silt and shit. Um, basically, we need to brush all that sand off. Along the edge there, there's all a brown coloration and also in between the two lips there's like black uh, and you want to get rid of all of that. You will notice that the abalone they're a lot more stiffer after being in the salt solution um, but yeah it helps with cleaning as well so the idea is you just go around you'll see how it starts to turn white um, as you start scrubbing off uh, a lot of the the shit basically. Now once I get it to a point where it's kind of looking pretty clean, I'll show you how to remove an abalone from the shell. Also you'll notice it starts to get a bit foamy. Um, Alright, so to remove the abalone, spoon. You got one end of the abalone and you got the other end. Down this section is all the guts that you don't want to pierce. You want to start at the pointy end. All right, so you go in there and you basically sort of just shimmy the spoon close to the shell as possible and it will pop out. Now you'll see all the guts as I mentioned is down the back. And if you're really careful, you can get a clean shell and uh, I know a lot of friends who actually appreciate some of these, so I tend to um, keep them. All right, now I'll put guts in here and I feed that to my chooks, as I mentioned. All right, next step. <clears throat> now you've taken it out of the shell. 
it, it's a lot easier to get in between those two lips. So get in between them, scrub it nice and clean, as clean as you want. Uh, the coloration does impart a little bit more flavor, but um, tend to pee when people eat them, they don't like the discoloration, so the cleaner can get better. Sorry, don't mind my dog. He's obviously seen someone he doesn't like at the front. Alright, so we'll just continue cleaning. Now you can sit there and scrub meticulously as much as you like and you can get them actually to a point where they're actually super clean and really good looking. Um, but it's up to you, uh, have, what's your preference. For me, I don't mind a bit of discoloration. Um, and it all kind of comes off in the end anyway. All right, I think I spent too long on this one as an example. All right, next thing, knife. Now, believe it or not, this front bit here is its mouth. And um, there's a couple of little hard bones in there which are basically teeth that grind and eat the, um, the uh, weed off the reef. So what I like to do, you can see there, that's just that's where its mouth is, just that little bit there. If you just slice a V-shaped, that'll pop right out. Um, alternatively, there's another technique, which I'll show you on the next abalone, but I'm gonna fast forward this. Um, and so that way you're not sitting here watching me clean meticulously 15 abalone. Um, cool. So once you're happy with it, you think it's pretty good, just give it a dunk and then you're off into the, the slow cooker, uh, pressure cooker, sorry. And probably one thing I forgot to mention is um, the reason why, the main reason why I wear these gloves is actually because when you're scrubbing, you're trying to hold the abalone and they're quite slippery, you tend to scrub your hand and trust me, by the end of it, it will be red raw. Um, so it gives you a bit of protection, I guess, like any latex, I guess. Pun intended. Now, the second way to remove the teeth on an abalone is you can actually just squeeze them out. You'll feel these hard bones and they'll just basically pop out and you can ditch them that way. So that's the option number two if you don't have a knife. Um, but me personally, um, I just remove them with a knife. Hey buddy, dog's getting into it. Now you'll probably notice here it's like hardy scrub. You can actually make these actually pretty pale as well. Um, but it does make it a lot easier the longer you soak it in the salt solution, like I said. So um, if you tried it once and you find it's a bit hard to clean, just leave them a bit longer or add more salt. Get that acidity up, as I mentioned, um, and you will find this is a less of a tedious process. Now I guess at this step, if you don't want to pressure cook them, but you still want a tender abalone, what you can also do is tenderize them at this point. So once they're all clean like that, you just get a meat tenderizer and bash the shit out of them. Um, but like I said, Trust me, it's a lot better if you pressure cook them. And I'll explain why a bit later on in this video. Now you probably notice these abalone shells are actually quite dirty. Some of them have got big chunks of weed on them. Uh, Ten of the bigger ones I find in the area that I go always build up a bit of material on, on, on them. Um, if you want to clean them up, uh, you can boil them and do all that stuff, put them in the sun are options uh, and then you can use them for jewellery or your smudge sticks, all sorts of stuff, so um, yeah, just a note. Now you'll notice with the salt 
how clean you can get it in, in between the lips uh, compared to other methods. Um, it'll actually go really white and um, the longer, like I said, the longer you soak it, the better it is. So I'll just show you this technique again about popping the teeth out. Um, so you can push it. You see these little bony, they're kind of little bony bits. That's its actual mouth and the teeth that uh, grind uh, on the reef systems to get food into their guts. Okay, now you've finished cleaning them. Next step is to fill the pressure cooker with the abalone in it so they're just covered. The less water you have in there, the better. You'll get a more concentrated stock at the end of it. And yes, that is a stock that you can use for multiple cooking sort of situations. Um, and probably the greatest advantage of doing this method. All right, straight into the pressure cooker. And you want a high pressure cook for approximately an hour, um, I think 45 minutes is suitable if you've got smaller abalone. Because uh, we've got larger ones today, I'll probably go just over an hour, about maybe 70 minutes. And um, we'll see you again in 70 minutes time. Now I quickly want to mention, I will not be responsible for the smell that this abalone will per permeate in your household. So I suggest you take the pressure cooker outside if you don't want to upset the wife. But trust me, it start, it, it, it's quite an aroma. Now I quickly wanted to just mention the difference in size if you can get these larger ones. Like from a meat perspective, there is significant difference. Like the shells might be slightly bigger, but the meat you get off of the larger abalone compared to the smaller ones is much more worthwhile. Okay, it's finally done. All right, pressure's released. Let's see what we're left with. Whoa. Not sure if you can see that because of the steam, but it's done. Now, those abalone, that stock, I call liquid gold. I'll pour it in a bowl in a moment. You can see the color of it. Okay, next step is to grab these abalone. It's still a bit warm. I should wait for the cold down, but the places go people to see and put them in a vac seal bag for later. Or you can just cook, eat them as they are. It's purely up to you. But, um, The way I like to do them is just when friends come around is crumb them, <coughs> deep fry them, uh, you know, pork and mushroom, uh, braised pork and mushroom, uh, Chinese sort of dishes are really good. And that broth, I'll tell you what, you can use that for anything. Um, you can use it for Curries, you can use it for soups, you can use it for anything that you want to elevate the flavour on. The abalone stock is something else, I promise you. Now, I'll just prove how tender these things are. Um, so this is one we just cooked. It's a bit warm still. Um, but honestly. Not chewy, just the right texture. And really good on its own, to be honest. Okay, so basically a vac seal. And yes, if you want a good vac sealer, pack foods. They offer some really good ones and the service is unbelievable. This one's about 10 years old, I guess. You can see this on the buttons are worn through, all faithful. Um, <coughs> Oops, turn it off, but... Mm. 
that, you can whack in the freezer, defrost them and use them anytime, any dish. You can chop them thinly, you can pickle them from here if you like and they're super tender. You can slice them, they're very versatile from this point forward. Um, uh, now, let's talk about the advantage. This stuff. Liquid gold. Honestly, you can use this stock for many uses. Well, there you have it. Um, that's how I cook my abalone. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe. Uh, plenty of more videos to come. And also follow my Instagram, which is WA Fishing Official. That's it for me. Thank you very much. Have a great one.